Uh, hi everyone, my name is Ashish Anna and welcome to my session on automating Couchbase monitoring with tools like Prometheus, Grafana and Couchbase uh, exporter. So what we are actually doing is we are using this uh, Couchbase uh, VM and uh, we are using its uh, REST endpoints that are provided uh, uh, to us uh, and feeding that uh, particular data with the help of Couchbase exporter onto Prometheus instance and finally displaying it to Grafana dashboard. So we have a, a monitoring solution that exists as a combination of these multiple tools that are needed to be set up and uh, we are actually able to uh, see our uh, dashboard stats uh, on dashboard metric stats onto a Grafana dashboard and now the main issue is like this tool works as a hack uh, or as a combination of multiple uh, different uh, disintegrated tools and uh, what we are actually focusing on is how to make these tools transition into a one seamless uh, big block of uh, a bigger tool, a bigger monitoring and alerting solution that can actually provide insights uh, to you uh, as per your organization's need. And finally, when we are able to do that in terms of uh, a reactive uh, paradigm, we are also focusing on to adding a predictive shift onto it uh, with uh, predictive analytics from the uh, time series that are cap time series data that is captured from Prometheus uh, with the help of uh, various machine learning packages uh, that we'll be discussing uh, in this session. So let's get started. First of all, I would like to define uh, the audience criteria or what uh, audience will be gaining from this session. Uh, and the uh, key uh, takeaways from this session are that, uh, okay, we have a particular solution that already exists uh, in terms of uh, different uh, disintegrated uh, three or four tools that are present. Now we want to actually automate this whole pro process or uh, speaking more like uh, rigidly, uh, orchestrate these tools to make them behave in a single layer uh, and uh, so that the data can flow smoothly from uh, the Couchbase VM to the Grafana dashboard without any hiccups or any manual human intervention uh, by us. And finally, I would like to uh, discuss concepts about a high availability of this solution as if this is your prime solution and Prometheus only runs as a single instance. Uh, so we also would need to discuss a two basic concepts of total failure recovery and high availability. And as a bonus, uh, we'll be discussing about predictive maintenance and anomaly analysis and where it all started. It, this all started with this particular blog by Mr. Karim Milani that we referred uh, during our case study. And what it shows is this basic setup that uh, AWS uh, EC2 uh, instance exists and uh, it uses the REST endpoints from Couchbase exporter. Uh, it uses the REST endpoints from uh, this Couchbase instance that is running and uh, Couchbase exporter uh, queries these REST endpoints, pools default, pool bucket to get these stats at these particular levels and feed these metrics into Prometheus uh, database, which is uh, listening to this uh, particular uh, Couchbase exporter process on a given particular port and feeds that uh, data as a data source to Grafana dashboard. And what we get is a beautiful dashboard uh, where we can actually uh, observe these stats uh, in real time, in near real time, or you can say exactly. And now uh, focusing uh, on to how these tools actually work in a disintegrated manner, or what is the actual effort that is required by us to make this tool uh, actually function uh, in terms of pointering. First one being that we need actually uh, capabilities uh, or a a command that actually runs a Couchbase exporter process uh, with this particular port number and these uh, Couchbase credential and this needs to be done manually. Second one being a hard-coded Prometheus uh, YML with these particular given targets uh, with same port number that is provided here uh, needs to be provided uh, as a Prometheus startup configuration file uh, while we are running Prometheus uh, instance and just a small note here this doesn't get dynamically updated without node exporter, a additional uh, tool that is provided uh, alongside uh, Prometheus, uh, it doesn't get updated dynamically. So let's just say if we actually remove this uh, instance, uh, so it will still be searching for this particular uh, process or this particular target to monitor to. Finally, we add uh, our Grafana dashboard uh, source. And based on uh, that source, we'll be providing the suitable dashboard file. And I would also like to show, share a few, few screenshots how to do this process uh, in uh, real Grafana tool. Uh, so this can be done in three easy steps. First one is like clicking on this settings button that exists uh, on the uh, leftmost uh, particular toolbar. And from there we select data sources and go to Prometheus and provides the necessary credentials. And then we click onto this uh, addition button and we 
uh, get on to uh, adding dashboards uh, for a given data source and we actually upload the corresponding dashboard uh, json file and we get this particular output and now just two key points i would like to highlight here that all these stats we get here are at cluster level so it would be nice if we could get these styles at bucket or even node level but in the out of box uh, implementation that is dashboard uh, implementation that is provided by couchbase exporter tool uh, we don't get stats at that level uh, second thing that we actually find uh, particularly vexing is that uh, this uh, localhost.9420 that we have specified earlier is coming instead of a cluster name let's just say if you are monitoring multiple clusters so this will often would come as a hindrance to determine which stat we are actually monitoring and we have to also look up uh, back to uh, the earlier process that we started that okay we have to see which couchbase exporter process is running and what is the url that is being mapped to this particular uh, port number so all these uh, small small limitation actually accumulates up and uh, uh, increases our labor effort to provide a seamless experience to this monitoring tool and by god if this monitoring tool fails or let's just say if any one of the processes stop so the effort to setting it up again is actually quite a lot and uh, you wouldn't want to go through it uh, in this uh, uh, in this particular setup so let's go and address these uh, limitation in a linear uh, manner and let's tackle them uh, sequentially first limitation being uh, uh, clearly manual efforts being involved secondly uh, these tools doesn't work as a combination third uh, one more thing is that customizations as i've discussed earlier that it doesn't provide customizations in grafana uh, now what about couchbase exporter since couchbase exporter only queries uh, node task and bucket level stats and what about uh, if we can get more information from couchbase exporter fourth one is again talking about concepts of high availability in our monitoring solution fifth being alerting and acting reactively and sixth being predictive analytics and reactive in a proactive manner now let's move on to the uh, mitigation of uh, first and second step which involves automated monitoring so what we have done is we have created a, a very uh, interesting rest based architecture which will be actually uh, happening in somewhat this manner so a user will be sending these particular uh, uh, credentials and uh, in the form of a REST query to our SUDP server, which will be containing all this node exporter, Prometheus, Alert Manager, all these uh, particular softwares. And a SUDP REST server uh, will maintain a target.json file for Couchbase exporter as well as for Prometheus. Uh, with Couchbase.exporter process, the, this will be capturing two to three things only hostname, user name, hostname, user, password. And one more interesting thing is the port number. So we'll actually dynamically find an empty port number and allocate that port number uh, for this Couchbase exporter process. Why? Because let's just say if we want to delete this thing, we would also be able to do that. Since we are the one who have dynamically generated it, we'll be able to store it uh, in the target.json file and then remove it and run a delete function to actually uh, delete this Couchbase exporter process. And since now the Couchbase exporter instance is running, uh, Prometheus will be uh, able to monitor it because we have also executed the no node exporter uh, in instance alongside uh, and node exporter is very important to di detect the dynamic changes happening at target.json file these two target.json file are independent and i'll be showing the uh, syntax differences and their utilization uh, in the code demo as well and finally a stat will be displayed in uh, grafana dashboard and for deletion we can simply send in the host name and it will actually end up uh, deleting uh, the uh, cover or uh, a host uh, with the Couchbase exporter instance and since it is eliminated from here uh, and here there won't be any need to actually uh, being shown here in the Grafana uh, dashboard. Now let's move on to our code section and see how this uh, is working uh, with our uh, Python 3 HTTP server that we have created. So what we see is there are two methods do post and do delete. Uh, so delete will be sent with the host name and uh, this del util will actually uh, get the uh, get the cb exporter reference target.json file and will delete the target uh, will delete the cb exporter instance for a given port number that it is running on and also it will uh, delete uh, the target.json file from prometheus server as well and uh, the post part involves sending host name username and password uh, credentials and it will write that into a target.json file for both prometheus and couchbase exporter also, it will be dynamically generating the port number with this particular function of get empty port. Now, uh, how would uh, the target.json file for both these tools would look like? 
first we'll show the target job json file for rest service so it will contain the url and the basic credentials and a dynamic port number that has been generated now the uh, configuration file for prometheus would look something somewhat like this where a cluster uh, name would be shown and again the port number there on which the our uh, couch base or uh, prometheus uh, server is actually listening onto now there are uh, interesting uh, labels provided onto it that was that weren't available earlier for example uh, the local host 9420 was showing instead we have uh, decided to add labels in our implementation and this uh, cluster name would be queried from the pool store default uh, uh, the rest endpoint and we'll actually from there we'll capture this and put it onto our uh, target or json file in prometheus and if let's say no name is there so orphan.vm will come and uh, secondly uh, there is this configuration uh, file that we are providing onto prometheus server so we have added alert manager as well as you can see in the syntax and we have added a rule file so this is the syntax to actually add target.json file into our uh, prometheus configuration file and uh, node exporter process is running alongside it and any target.json file changes will be captured by it and hence our dynamic adding or removal of uh, couch base uh, instances under uh, evaluation would be done automatically and uh, one more concept that i would like to share here is that uh, instead of running these as uh, independent processes it is better to run them as uh, services let's just say instead of uh, creating uh, using no hub command uh, and running these uh, processes as backup uh, it would be a much uh, better practice to run these as uh, services so we can actually observe the statuses uh, in a much more seamless and much more practical uh, manner now let's uh, move on to a presentation uh, back uh, and uh, let's see what are the other limitations that we are mitigating. Second one being uh, customizations. Now customizations uh, play a very big part uh, in terms of adding any uh, monitoring solution. Let's just say there are a bun bunch of metrics but you don't want to see them and there are very specific metrics that are of uh, utmost importance to you. So that would be uh, much better if your, your monitoring tool can actually provide it in uh, out of uh, box term so let's go ahead and check them so there are three x customizations that you want to actually discuss first one being customizations at uh, grafana level and or uh, dashboard level that we can actually provide second being uh, this uh, customization at alert manager level and third one being customization and directly building our couch base exporter again and provide uh, new insights to it uh, let's discuss the first one uh, here we can actually get stats at bucket and node level as well and we can add these queries at our uh, variables uh, the new variables that we can add in settings and these particular names will actually start appearing in terms of localhost 9420 that I have uh, earlier discussed uh, in the above uh, topmost uh, bar and uh, how we have actually uh, manipulated this is by directly taking in uh, the Grafana dot uh, Grafana's uh, dashboard.json file instead of using Grafonet and JSON it we actually looked at the JSON code that is present and we uh, simply have taken uh, the graphs that are actually uh, present there and have uh, re uh, queried them or have we have altered the expression that we are actually querying at uh, different levels for example node level to in order to get new stats as well as new stats at different level for example nodes level uh, stat we can be uh, get by this particular expression and the legend also can be altered by adding these this particular uh, syntax that we are using and uh, we can add the title we can change the title as well one of the most important uh, thing while doing this is uh, changing the id as each and every dashboard component has its own unique id and you can refer these dashboard changes that we have made and uh, you can uh, easily see the newer ones as we have added a lot of white spaces uh, uh, in between these or uh, two so in these two any two uh, particular graphs so it is very easily observable to a given user and uh, it can easily be manipulated by you as well uh, or you can uh, we have added uh, quite a lot of metrics here in as well at node level as well as bucket level metrics and we have provided legends at bucket level as well so it will be quite uh, helpful for you as well to actually directly use our code directly from uh, out of box uh, implementation and you can also see differences between uh, our dashboard and the existing dashboard that is provided by Couchbase uh, uh, exporter team. Now moving on to moving back on to this alert manager. So we we can actually uh, this alert manager also provide us with the capabilities to generate uh, alerts based on the rules and these rules can be customized and uh, rule customization logic is again uh, similar to 
uh, the uh, again uh, these particular metrics that are being captured for example couch with no interesting stats spatial data sites a similar kind of uh, variables are there like for example couch based cluster balance ta cluster task rebalance and these uh, based on these uh, particular variables we can actually create our custom rules and assign a severity to it and these rules should be triggered based on your requirement uh, and uh, we can refer to the documentation for this uh, particular task and you will be actually able to create your own rules as well this is quite a relatively simple process as also third one being uh, creating your own version of couchbase exporter and this is uh, the really hard bit and uh, requires a lot of uh, dedication and patience as well because uh, for this you actually need to understand the source code of couchbase exporter tool and uh, based on that you have to actually identify what is the response that you are receiving let's just say index status is the particular response that we are interested in and actually emulate the whole process that is uh, gone into coding the couchbase exporter and add it for your uh, particular metric just to give you a quick overview on that uh, we'll be actually diving uh, deep into my earlier uh, reference art uh, article that explain this process in uh, complete in depth. So what we actually need to do is we first would need to query uh, or query uh, the particular rest endpoint. And based on that, you will be getting a, a JSON response. And from that JSON response, you should be constructing this kind of a struct. And this can be done with any online tool from uh, JSON to Golang converter, Golang struct converter. And this, from this, you have to actually create a client object. And this client object uh, needs to be fed onto a uh, collector object. and collector object would be uh, collecting the stats that is received by the client that is querying our Couchbase VM uh, rest endpoints. And that would be again added on to our main.go file that will be actually running and uh, storing these uh, stats and uh, sending them to and uh, Prometheus will be actually getting those stats. So that's how this whole architecture goes on. So this is the uh, way we declare this index uh, index struct and uh, here is how this starting since we are actually getting a multiple uh, an array of indexes so we'll be actually using uh, this uh, array of index file here so what we the way we have developed this is by using the already existing code and seeing it how that has been actually implemented and uh, basically copying it and making the necessary changes that are needed to be made so one uh, file has to be put into a client directory one file has to be put into collector directory and then uh, changes are needed to be made uh, in the uh, main.go file so one of the most important things here is like uh, how do we want our stats to appear or be collected by our collector object? So do we want them to get it in float format or in bool format or in time dot since uh, this we want to capture time dot since stats? So all these things are very important and must be decided that what exactly do you want from your custom uh, newly added metric? And based on that, uh, you will be adding it onto a uh, main dot go file. And after after these changes, you'll be actually running a uh, go dot build and you will be uh, testing it and uh, doing all the necessary steps that are mentioned in the documentation. So when you are done with that, uh, you will actually be having a very good cu custom solution uh, for your Couchbase.exporter instance. Now moving back to our slides and uh, discussing about high availability and total recovery concepts. Uh, this is based on a very simple question. Let's just say if a VM goes down, our only existing monitoring so a solution that is also providing us uh, with the necessary alerts is now down. How do we mitigate this uh, issue? So this is the particular architecture that we have come up with. Uh, this actually requires uh, a bit of uh, discussion with users that, okay, uh, we have asked the user to actually send duplicate uh, request onto a duplicate running instances. Uh, this we have done to actually save our efforts. Uh, one more thing that can be done here is like adding a VIP instead of uh, actually sending a manual duplicate requests here. Uh, and uh, basically instead of sending duplicate requests to each and every independent URL, they'll be sending a request to a VIP and that will be redirecting it to these particular two instances. And what has happened there is uh, that we are running those uh, as identical uh, particular combination of these uh, tools uh, to provide high availability and uh, here also for Grafana we will be having a particular VIP uh, that will be directing to the Grafana that is actually active and uh, we are running two identical uh, setups which are maintaining a consensus copy of target.json file which is actually communicating with the gossip protocol and maintaining consistency in terms of target.json file 
uh, let's just say if one VM goes down and uh, target changes in target.json uh, file happens and this one comes up. So there will be a consistency that will be maintained uh, eventually uh, with on this target.json files uh, targets. And then we are running alert managers for uh, these two particular uh, Prometheus uh, instances and these are uh, interrelated by mesh. Uh, with mesh, uh, what we actually achieve is that uh, our Prometheus can actually send alerts to this uh, particular alert manager as well, and this can also send uh, alert to this one. And in the same fashion, uh, this can send alerts to this alert manager, and this one can send alerts to this alert manager. And uh, since we are receiving duplicate results, so a deduplication layer uh, would be applied, and with, with that in uh, place, we can actually send this across our platform uh, channel set or that are actually available to us. Let's just say a Slack or you have set up a Outlook uh, alert so you can actually uh, send the alerts to the necessary teams uh, or the necessary group deals that are present uh, to uh, take the necessary action. And now talking about total uh, recovery process. Uh, this is uh, actually a way, rather a very simple uh, implementation and we can add it to uh, we can add it, uh, it in the form of the bash script that runs at whenever your computer or the necessary VM gets rebooted. So it will be actually referencing the target.json file for Couchbase exporter and running all the Couchbase exporter instances from start and after that uh, running Prometheus, Grafana and Node exporter and alert manager accordingly. So with this we actually conclude our discussion on high availability and total recovery uh, and we end up uh, creating a monitoring solution that actually works in rather seamless fashion or in a more scalable fashion without human intervention. Now let's go on and uh, dive uh, into our uh, another module or the final bonus module of predictive maintenance. This is something that I am currently working on and uh, I currently focus uh, on anomaly detection or outlier analysis and this is something uh, that we have uh, newly added uh, in this particular tool. So let's start with it. Uh, so this is a rather overwhelming site, but just to break it down, what we are doing is we are using uh, this FB profit library uh, to actually forecast our variables or the forecast our metrics in future. And based on those metrics, we will we are using this PyOD tool to determine if those metrics are uh, actually uh, outlier or not. Uh, basically, they are either behaving abnormally or not. That is the simple uh, definition uh, for our outlier. Are they out of a, let's say, a given cluster or a given group of near highly close point or are they like behaving in a fashion that they shouldn't be behaving? So this is a rather a two-step pipeline. First one being highlighted here. So what we do is we create a 75-25 uh, split and we actually create this window which is uh, the approximately 4.5 days. As we assume that uh, five working days or approximately one week of working day would be enough to actually carry out our actions or take the necessary mitigation steps. And we monitor these particular uh, uh, metrics. So let's just say re CPU request counts and network and DB consumption. Also, this is being currently done only for a single VM. We are not doing it at a cluster level, rather a particular uh, Couchbase VM. Uh, so we are actually getting stats from the VM as well as well as the database uh, stats. I have actually uh, through the presentation used uh, this VM and instance uh, interchangeably, but instance being that uh, the Couchbase is running on a particular VM and Couchbase is defining as occupying as a small uh, amount of RAM from the original VM that is actually running and uh, executing other uh, uh, processes as well. So uh, the way we are getting this data is by this query API that is provided by Prometheus and we are not querying it in real time. We are actually uh, querying it after uh, frequent intervals, uh, rather not frequent as this is not uh, uh, provided to actually scrape Prometheus data on real time. Uh, so we are actually scraping it after let's just say five minutes or 10 minutes interval. And then we are predicting it, uh, predicting these variables in future, let's just say 4.5 days as we have said. And we can see this is the actual variables that are present and these are the forecasted variables. Now we can see that uh, this uh, purple variable uh, is uh, rather uh, accurately presented rather than this uh, particular one uh, as uh, the seasonality of this uh, particular va variable is not uh, actually uh, being able to uh, correctly estimated by this uh, additive models that we are using in our FB profit uh, library. And we are using mean evaluation error to uh, uh, analyze our models performance. And second thing that we are doing is like uh, predicting how uh, 
far these variables are out from the local clustering point and what that information what that gives us is a information that okay now your machine is not behaving uh, in the regular fashion and you should actually consider uh, taking a necessary step so one of the things that we do is uh, we run these uh, assembling uh, algorithms uh, of uh, local outlier clustering factoring cluster based uh, local outliers identification and all these uh, things we combine them and we create a particular uh, ensemble that will uh, based on the predicted data that is this curve and uh, forecasted data that we have forecasted in future we predict if this is become outlier or not and we keep a sanity check. this is not a hard code statistical check that we have added but a sanity check that our model predictions are good enough to be used by us so we also run this pyod package on our actual data that is available to us uh, this has been done for testing and we see how far is it uh, uh, in terms of uh, error or is the error is permissible enough uh, in term for these two uh, predictions and we actually determine a sweet spot that okay based on the data that we are receiving as of now uh, this is uh, good enough to predict this this far is good enough to predict for example we have come up with a one day window where we can predict with a reasonable certainty that okay these variables are going to behave in this fashion so this second step often serves as a checking or a rather a it's uh, rather a marker of a sanity that okay the predictions that are being made by our LTA models with FP profit are correct and you can go ahead uh, with using them so instead of using a very hardcore uh, statistical check we are actually opting out for this particular uh, experiment and uh, the changes of model uh, performance with time actually hasn't been analyzed uh, as a scope of this project so, but we are also focusing on that as well so that is all uh, for this session and hope you found this session uh, helpful and uh, let's see uh, what are the resources that you can refer to for future uh, so one of the references that you can do is uh, refer to is uh, the article by Karim Milani uh, regarding setting up uh, all these processes practically and the second one is again discusses and explore the all the concepts that uh, are provided by me and third one I have provided the links for different documentation uh, of different tools that you can refer to uh, and uh, I have also added the predictive analytics code in my GitHub repository that I have uh, shared continuously throughout this session for your reference. And uh, I hope you found this session uh, helpful and this helps you in creating a tool that is actually uh, specific to your need.